What's up world? My name is Timothy Hammond, but if you ever see me on the internet, you probably know me as the Big City Gardener. Here today, this is the Seed Starting Mini Masterclass. We're going to cover everything that you need to get started starting your own seeds at home. So, without further ado, let's get to it. First, let's talk about why you should grow your own seeds, or why you should start your own plants from seeds. One, everybody's used to growing the same varieties. Every year, every spring or summer, you go to the garden center, and let's say you look for tomatoes. And we all know the common early girls, or better bush, or even romas. And those are great to grow, and I enjoy growing them, and grow them every year. But did you know there's thousands of types of tomatoes out there that you could actually grow? Different colors or sizes that you'll never see in the grocery store. So why not open yourself up to the possibility of growing these different varieties? Another reason why you should be starting your own seeds is because you're in control of the timeline. Now, we all know about our first and last frost date. Well, when it comes to the last frost date, that there's usually around a two week grace period, give or take. So when you start your own seeds, you're able to get planted outside earlier and you're not dependent on the nursery or big box store to get the variety that you want to plant. So it helps you get a head start on your gardening season. Another reason why you should be starting your own seeds is directly tied into our last point, right? That was being in control of the timeline. Well, when we start our own seeds, we're also able to ensure that we have succession plantings ready to go. So as one thing fades out of the garden, we're able to replace it so we have little to no lag time between our harvest. Something you should keep in mind whenever you're starting your own seeds is that not everything wants to be started outside of the garden bed. And by that I mean not everything transplants well. So some things like to be directly seeded into the bed all right and the things that like to be directly seeded into the bed are usually your root crops now that includes radishes beets carrots parsnips see it's extremely hard to transplant these because as soon as the root gets disturbed the plant just wants to die also other things that don't transplant well are things like beans or corn or even squash for that matter. If possible, it's better to just directly seed these crops directly into your garden. Next, we're gonna talk about the actual supplies needed to get started with seed starting at home. So, you're gonna see me reference this seed starting kit pretty often, and now when I say seed starting kit, I'm usually just referring to these three pieces, or the pieces that come in the kit. The first is the bottom tray. All bottom trays are not created equally. You'll notice this one I have in my hand, it's a little bit thicker or it's thicker than a lot of other seed starting trays you can buy. Now, whenever you go to purchase one of these trays, please make sure to buy high quality plastic. Because if you don't, what usually ends up happening is the seed tray cracks at these corners whenever you water it or you pick it up to move it and once these corners crack you usually end up throwing it away and then it just ends up in a landfill but if we can buy a high quality thicker bottom tray this should last you for multiple seasons the next piece is the actual insert see this insert fits directly into our tray now this insert holds our planting medium now, if you do not have this tray or you do not have this insert, this could easily be recreated with a plastic cup or maybe a four inch pot or if you had something like a foil pan. This dome just sits on top of our tray, on top of the insert to help make sure that we are keeping the necessary humidity level inside of our dome because seeds germinate better in an area with higher humidity. Now. If we don't have this humidity dome, this can easily be recreated with something like saran wrap. Or if you have any water bottles or old milk jugs laying around, you could cut those in half and now you have a mini dome that could sit on top of your plastic cups or whatever it is you are using to start your seeds. The next piece are the actual seeds, okay? 
And when it comes to seeds, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're using high quality seeds, as fresh as possible. So if you've had seeds from the prior seasons, please make sure you store them properly. If you don't store them properly, what usually ends up happening is the germination rate decreases. And that's not what we're looking for. So store your seeds properly. If not, then be prepared to replace your seeds every year. How do we store our seeds properly? You're gonna to wanna to keep them in a cool, dark place if possible. And if you have an airtight bag, maybe a Ziploc bag or a freezer bag, that's even better. Storing your seeds in this manner will help preserve them so you're able to use these seeds for seasons to come. Next, we're gonna talk about the actual planting medium. Now that's the actual material that you put inside of your seed starting tray, your cups, your pots, whatever it is that you are using. Now, when you go to the store to look for a planting medium, there's plenty of options, right? You see bag soil, you see potting soil, you see organic, non-organic, you see in-ground soil. Too many options to choose from. Now, what you're going to want to do is to find a soil that is light, airy, and fluffy. Most big box stores or retail nurseries will have seed starting mix. Now, seed starting mix usually includes the following ingredients. Cocoa core, vermiculite, peat moss, perlite, and then some sort of organic amendments to help feed the plant during its initial stages. If you're unable to find seed starting mix pre-bagged, feel free to make your own. Mix these prior ingredients in different ratios until you come up with something that works for you. Now, we're looking for a light, airy, porous mix, okay? An easy way to check if the bag of soil that you're planning on using will work for seed starting mix is while it's still in the bag, go ahead and squeeze a corner. See, if you're able to bring your fingers together and form a ball, then it's pretty light and airy. Now, when I let it go, you should see it spring back to its original shape. Now, you're gonna wanna stay away from things like in-ground soil whenever you are trying to start seeds, okay? You're gonna wanna stay away from top soil also. These things tend to retain entirely too much moisture for our seeds. Now, what we want is a light, airy mix that is able to retain just enough moisture, but also dry out. Okay. Since we're just starting these plants and the root systems aren't fully developed, that's why we definitely need to pay attention to the moisture content within our planting medium. We need to make sure that we are not retaining too much water and keeping too much water on those roots, right? Remember, roots need oxygen to breathe and to grow. All of that water or a waterlogged planting medium stops our oxygen from reaching the roots. Then you'll get no growth and probably end up with diseased or stressed seedlings. Whenever you go to start your seedlings, you're going to need high quality seedling starting mix. But because the seedling starting mix is so light and airy and porous, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you wet the mix prior to putting it into your planting container. Also, if you're gonna use a slow release granular fertilizer, this is the time that you wanna add it. You'll need a vessel, some sort that can hold the potting mix and can also hold water. So we're gonna take the potting mix. And now you see that it is dry. Okay, squeezing no moisture. This is fresh out the bag. If you're going to add your slow release fertilizer, this is when you do it. You would just drop it in, mix it together. Also, you're going to want to try to break up any clumps or lumps that you find in your mix. Once you have most of the lumps broken up, or once you have the lumps broken up, now it's time to add some moisture to the mix. Now, I recommend mixing a little bit of water in at a time, as opposed to just dumping gallons of water on here 
because you don't want this mix to be too moist. All right, so we're just gonna mix it around. Trying to make sure that all of the mix gets moistened. Now, why do we do this? Because when we fill the seed starting trays, if we were to just to put dry mix in here, whenever we put the seed on top and we covered it with more, whenever we watered it in, the level would fall. So in order to try to keep your level consistent, it's better to moisten the mix prior to planting. Also, moistening the mix prior to planting helps ensure that all of the mix is actually moistened, okay? Like you saw, or like we've talked about, this is light, airy, and fluffy. So you want to make sure that it has the ideal amount of moisture prior to placing your seed in. Because the mix sometimes has a tendency to not want to absorb water. How do you know when the mix is ready? Or how do you know if you've added enough water or too much water? If I can grab just a handful and squeeze it, and just a few drops of water come out, then I know that it is sufficiently moist. If I were to grab a handful and squeeze it and water was just running out, that would be too much moisture. You would need to add some more seed starting mix in. Sort of like baking a cake, right? You need proper ratio of these ingredients. Once you have the mix moistened, it's time to just fill up your seed starting tray. Once you have your tray, your cup, whatever it is that you're using, once you have it filled with the mix, now it's time to plant your seeds. A good rule to remember whenever planting seeds is that you want to plant them about a half inch deep or you want to plant them as deep as they are big right so a seed like a watermelon uh, a squash you would plant those seeds deeper than you would plant something like lettuce broccoli or even beets for that matter for smaller seeds I like to put two or three seeds in each hole and that way you're almost guaranteed to get something to grow and if all three of them germinate then you just pick whichever one is the strongest and thin out the rest after you place your seeds in the seed starting mix you're going to want to come and fill in the top or fill in this little hole right here with more of your mix a tip or something that I like to do is instead of coming back with the same seed starting mix, I like to put compost on top. That way it acts as a, a mulch and also whenever I'm watering these plants, the nutrients from the compost are working their way down into the root zone. So I'm just going to come in and put a light layer of compost across the top. So with adding the compost to the top, not only have I mixed in slow release granular fertilizer into my potting mix, I'm also getting more nutrients from the compost every time I water. So once we have the seeds in and once we've covered them, it's now time to water your tray. Wait, we are not going to pour it on top. Don't forget, you water your trays from the bottom. Fill up the bottom container, drop your insert in. You want to make sure that you have enough water in your tray. So in order to find out, you're going to check your water line on your insert, okay? That lets me know that the water is coming up to here. So there's holes in the bottom of these inserts. And the planting medium is actually soaking up and wicking the excess moisture up to the top. I'll let this tray sit here until the planting medium is fully saturated and then I'll make sure I pour off the excess water. 
because we don't want to attract fungus gnats. Afterwards, it's time for your humidity dome. This humidity dome is just gonna make sure that we have the proper humidity in order for our seedlings to germinate. You could easily put a piece of saran wrap on top of this tray and it will do the exact same thing. As soon as you see sprouts, it's time to remove your dome. Let's talk about lighting. If possible, you should start your seeds outside so they can already be acclimated to the environment in which they're going to grow. But if starting your seeds outside isn't an option, maybe because it's the middle of the winter and where you live there's too much snow outside so you can't start your seeds out there well you're going to need some artificial lighting to help out with that there's plenty of different options to consider when it comes to lighting there's things like fluorescence led lights hps which is high pressure sodium or mh metal halide lights some of these work better than others when it comes to starting seedlings we want to make sure we have the right color spectrum, but at the same time, we want to make sure that the light is not too intense for our seedlings. Remember, they're new, they're little. If the light is too bright or too strong, you could end up burning or even killing your seedlings. In order to avoid that, I recommend you use fluorescent lights or LED lights. See, things like high pressure sodiums and metal halides they're usually used for bigger plants. Plus, they consume a lot more energy than fluorescents or LEDs. And why do we need to use more energy when the energy is being used inefficiently? Okay, fluorescents, they usually come in two foot, four foot, or eight foot tubes. These are the ones that you find at your local box store. Okay, you'll see them, they're usually called shop lights. These shop lights, they're amazing. You can get LED tubes or you can get fluorescent tubes that fit within these shop lights. And we can hang these shop lights on our seed starting shelves. We can hang these shop lights in many different setups or ways to provide ample lighting for our starting seedlings. Now, lighting is not important when we first start our seeds, okay? Prior to them germinating and breaking through the actual soil, we don't actually need any light. Therefore, whenever we are going to use artificial light or we are in control of the light, make sure you do not start using the light until your seedlings have actually germinated. Using lights, fluorescence LEDs, whatever they may be, prior to our seedlings germinating is a surefire way to waste money and waste electricity. No germination means no leaves. No leaves mean there's nothing there to absorb the light. And all you're doing is just heating and baking the top of your seed starting mix and actually causing that top layer of moisture to evaporate. So remember, you don't actually need the lights until your seeds germinate. Now let's talk about how long we're going to actually use these lights. And by that, I mean the light cycle. Let's think about springtime outside. Sun comes up around 7 a.m., sun goes down after 7 a.m. Now, with our lighting set up inside or wherever we're starting our seeds, we're trying to mimic that of the sun. We're trying to mimic the light exposure a seed would receive if it was planted outside in our garden. So, what you're going to need is some sort of mechanical timer digital timer, Christmas light timer, anything that enables you to control how long your lights are on and off for. And now what you're going to want to do is set that timer to where your lights are on between 12 and 16 hours a day and they're off between 12 and 8 hours a day. See, you can kind of play with this timing or you could play with the timer and find out what works best for your area. There's not really a one solution fits all. I've started seeds and grown them using a 12-12, that's 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness, just as well as I've started seeds using the 16 hour light and eight hour darkness method. So it's really up to you. Whenever we're using artificial light, whether it be our LEDs or our fluorescent tubes, you're going to want to pay attention to the distance between the light 
and the actual top of our plants. For example, imagine we had plants growing here, six or eight inches tall. You don't want your lights or you don't want your fluorescent tubes or LED tubes, regardless of what lighting source you're using, you don't want the light to actually come in contact with the leaves, okay? Now, when it comes to lighting, a common rule is place your hand underneath the light. See how hot the back of your hand is underneath the lights, all right? If it's hot enough to where you need to move your hand, then it means it's too hot for the plants. But if you can keep your hand there comfortably, then that means that's the ideal height for you to place your lights. So depending on what type of light you are using, that could be as close as four to six inches, or it could even be two to four feet. It depends on the type of light that you are using. While every seed is able to germinate at a vast array of temperatures, what you find out is that seedlings usually germinate best at around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that doesn't mean that the room is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That means that the actual soil or the planting medium that we put in our containers is at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, how do you increase the temperature of your planting medium? Good question. The most common way to heat up your planting medium or to heat up your seedling starting tray is to get a seedling heating mat. Now, you can get a seedling heating mat with a temperature control and you could set the temperature to exactly what you want, the optimal temperature for whatever it is that you are starting. Now, if you don't have a seedling heating mat, don't worry. I'm sure that I have a hack for you here. Most homes have a refrigerator. Now, that refrigerator, it emits a lot of heat out of the top of it, okay? So, no seedling heating mat, no problem. Take your tray, take your container, take whatever it is that you are starting your seeds in and place it on top of your refrigerator. Now that refrigerator will heat up the bottom of your tray and surprisingly, it will heat the tray up to around 80 degrees, 77 to 82 degrees. It depends on other factors also, like the ambient temperature of the room. So, no seedling heating mat, no problem. Use your fridge. Now, let's talk about how to properly water your seedlings. Now, a lot of people are gonna be tempted to just take the water and pour it on the top, the same way a lot of people water the garden. Now, that's not the best way, nor is it the most efficient way to water a seed starting tray. This method of watering is not solely related to a seed starting tray. Whether you have a seed starting tray or not, I still recommend you water this way. And the way you do that is by bottom watering, okay? You're going to want a container that can hold your seedlings. And we are going to want to apply the water to the bottom. Why? Well, if our entire cell or cup or whatever it is that you are starting your seeds in, we want this to be somewhat dry. If we apply the water from the bottom, what ends up happening is these bottom layers of our planting medium, they wick up the moisture and then they redistribute the moisture up, up and up. Okay, and before you know it, your planting cell, your tray, your cup, whatever it may be, has been properly watered. And you don't have to sit there and pour the water on the top on each individual cup or in each individual cell. This is a way where you can come, fill up that bottom tray, set your insert in it, and walk away. If you have excess water left over in that tray the following day, feel free to take it and pour off that excess water. You don't want your plants just sitting in water. Remember, too much water in our planting medium suffocates the roots. Therefore, we wanna make sure that we apply just enough water to fully saturate our planting medium, but not to oversaturate it or not to drown it. So again, bottom watering is the way to go whenever it comes to seedlings. Keeping the water off of the leaves will also help prevent 
common diseases or common problems that can occur. Like their full grown or fully mature counterparts, our seedlings also need fertilizer. A simple way to fertilize your seedlings or to help get them started on the right foot is to mix in a slow release fertilizer into your planting medium prior to planting your seeds. See, this is a way to make sure that we're feeding our seedlings throughout their initial growth stages. After our seedlings have been growing within our cells or cups for a while, you're going to need to add extra fertilizer. And for that, I recommend a liquid fertilizer that you can mix in and then bottom water your trays the same way. Now, when it comes to using liquid fertilizer or slow release fertilizer for that matter, you do not want to use them at full strength. That's very important. Remember, these seedlings are developing a root system. By that, they are not they're not strong enough to handle a full strength feeding yet. So what you're gonna wanna do is to use a quarter strength formula or a quarter strength fertilizer application. So if it tells you to mix in 10 milliliters per gallon, what you're gonna wanna do is to use two and a half milliliters per gallon instead. Something I practice is making sure I mix in compost within my planting medium. That way, I'm fertilizing my plants as they grow, but I'm also helping to improve that soil within that cell block. Mixing the compost into our planting medium is basically a way of giving your plants a head start, right? We all know that compost works wonders in our garden on fully mature plants, so think about it. Imagine what it does to our seedlings. So, you successfully started your seeds or successfully grown your seeds inside. And now springtime's right around the corner and you're ready to get these babies outside. But you can't go directly from inside to outside with your seedlings. And by that, I mean you need to slowly introduce them to the outside conditions. This process is called hardening off. How do I go about hardening off my plants? Well, it's a simple process. What you're going to want to do is to slowly introduce your plants to outside. One way to do this is to start by introducing them outside in a shaded area for a limited amount of time and gradually increase that time period over the next few days. Also, what we're going to want to do is start our plants in the shade and then every day introduce them to more and more sunlight. This way, whenever we go to plant them outside, they're not shocked when they receive direct sunlight. Or they're not shocked by the temperature variation between inside and outside. And what you're doing here is you are introducing your plants that have been growing inside in a temperature regulated environment. Now you're introducing them to outside to the elements. Not acclimating your plants to the elements outside can cause an array of problems. One, you could stunt their growth. Two, you could burn the leaves. Three, you could even kill them. So this easy process can help prevent a lot of problems down the road. Well, let's talk about some common problems that occur whenever you're starting seeds at home and some solutions for them. One, if you notice that your plants are leggy, as they say, and by leggy, I mean they're long and stretchy, there's a long distance between the top of the soil and that first set of leaves. Well, a solution for that, or what that usually means is that your light source is not strong enough. A solution for weak or leggy stem plants is to one, change your light bulbs. Two, maybe move your plants from wherever they are to an area where they receive more sun or more direct sun. Another problem that commonly occurs whenever starting seeds is that people notice that their seedlings are not growing directly up and down or vertically. They'll notice that their seedlings might be leaning one way or another, to one side or another side. This usually occurs whenever the plant is chasing the light. You'll notice plants usually grow towards their light source. So if you see a plant veering to the left or leaning to the right, well, that's telling you that it is finding stronger or brighter light in that direction. 
One solution is to constantly rotate your planter or constantly rotate your seedling tray every day or every two days. This will guarantee that your plant straightens up or move your plants to wherever they're leaning towards. They're letting you know that there's a stronger light source over there. If you're using a seed starting shelving system and you notice this problem, that means that one, your lights are more than likely not directly overhead the plants, or it could mean that one of your bulbs is weaker than the other and needs to be replaced. Another issue people run into whenever starting seeds at their house is something known as seedling blight. And what occurs is your seedlings will be growing great, right? They'll be thriving. And then all of a sudden, the next day you come in and it looks like maybe somebody stepped on them or they're just all dead and turned over to the side and you don't know why. That's usually caused by seedling blight. Now, that's a disease that affects the roots of the plant. It usually arises whenever you are using dirty equipment. So, a solution for that is to make sure that you clean, sanitize, and disinfect your equipment in between plantings. These small little bugs that are flying around, well, those are known as fungus gnats. And those usually occur whenever you are keeping your planting medium entirely too wet. Or if you have an insert and you continue to leave water in the tray. So a solution for that is you want to make sure that you're dumping out the excess water from the bottom of the tray. Also, if you practice bottom watering, once you notice that the top of your cubes or the top of your planting medium has become moist, then it's safe to remove the excess water. Do not water your seedlings every day. That usually leads to a problem of your planting medium staying entirely too moist. So, again, if you have fungus gnat issues, what you want to do is make sure you are not leaving your planting medium too saturated. You can find me, Big City Gardener, at all social media platforms. And check out the blog at BigCityGardener.com. Thank you for joining me at this seed starting mini masterclass. Now, take what you've learned here, go outside, get your hands in the dirt, and just grow it. And don't forget to click on the bonus material included with this class right here.